ओके आई थिंक वी कैन स्टार्ट द सेशन या सो आई वेलकम ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर सुत टीचिंग सेशन सो वी आर रेग्युलरली कंडक्टिंग दिस ऑन एवरी वेन्सडे बट सिंस लास्ट टाइम आई कुंड कंडक्ट ड्यू टू द फॉलोइंग ऑफ उपोसत डे आई शिफ्टेड इट ऑन संडे बट फ्रॉम नेक्स्ट वेन्सडे ऑनवर्ड्स एक्चुअली वी कैन डू इट ऑन वेन्सडेज एंड एस यू कैन सी आई हैव shared my screen which is displaying dhatu vibhanga sutta and this is the sutta that we were discussing right now <clears throat> so this sutta is available in majjhima nikaya and uh, it deals with elements so as you know buddha explains this so called person so called individual in different different manner very much like giving a different perspective so typically we think i am a man i am a woman i am father i am daughter i am brother i am sister i am wife i am husband so likewise we have this typical conventional sort of uh, understanding but buddha is taking us beyond that and uh, giving some deeper perspectives about this uh, experience <clears throat> so in this dhatu vibhanga sutta there is this is a very beautiful uh, story behind this sutta so i'll just uh, briefly explain the uh, the reason why buddha was uh, preaching this sutta in one occasion uh, venerable sorry uh, king bimbisara and uh, king pukkusati were unseen friends they were living uh, fairly in a distant place <clears throat> but they were quite uh, trustworthy and they are quite friendly with each other <clears throat> so as a result they used to exchange various valuables so say for example kim pukusati sent certain valuables to kim bimbisara similarly kim bimbisara also sent some valuables to kim pukusati so this kind of a long term uh, good relationship was there between them so in one occasion uh, kim pukusati has sent very valuable stuff like gems and gold all these items to king bimbisara so at that time king bimbisara was thinking what is the precious thing that i can offer to my friend so there he understood that i can offer the message of the buddha and uh, so therefore he wrote certain dhamma and he informed that the buddha dhamma sangha has arisen in the world so as a result so he is sending this message with uh, with a messenger so so this message reached when the king pukusati and uh, he actually went to his uh, topmost floor in his palace and he read the message and immediately he got sort of uh, inspirated uh, inspired because of this uh, message so he is he too is a very merit uh, meritorious person so therefore after listening to or after going through the message from king bimbisara so he was quite happy about it so as a result and he went through the whole message and uh, uh, started to practice meditation so since he being a very uh, devoted person for meditation in his previous lives uh, so he was able to uh, attain jhana with less time so you know if someone has a lot of past experience so it's a matter of putting back him into the same track so then uh, compared to the others so this person can easily attain jhana so this is a kind of a fact and so accordingly king pukusati was able to attain jhana and now he is experiencing it enjoying it and later he wanted to become a monk on behalf of the buddha so then he brought ball robes from the shop and then he himself become a monk and then uh, gone out of the palace uh, in a secret manner and uh, approaching the buddha so there buddha understood that he is having less life span so therefore buddha too left jetanarame uh, and now he is approaching king or this now the monk pukusati venerable pukusati So at that time pukusati understood that uh, it is not enough time to go to meet the buddha as now it is already 
dark night so he get got the permission from uh, one of the potter so this potter has his warehouse its workshop and it is empty in the night so he got permission from him and uh, he stayed there and buddha also approached there and buddha asked him permission from the potter and potter said no problem there is enough enough space available but there is already one monk uh, one ascetic and if he like if he give permission you may stay so then buddha approach venerable pukkusati and ask is it all right to stay here spend one night here so then venerable pukkusati said no problem there are enough space available so please be my guest so then buddha understood that this person venerable pukkusati is somewhat uh, uh, preferred to be alone uh, in a attend jhana and so he spent several hours at night in jhana and buddha too didn't go to preach rather he himself attained uh, samapatti and stayed silently at, after a while both emerged from their concentration and then buddha just inquired from uh, venerable pukkusati on behalf of whom that you became a monk from where you are coming have you ever met your teacher if you met your teacher that uh, so actually when buddha was asking when the pukkusati mentioned that i uh, went forth on behalf of the buddha who came from uh, sakyan family and then buddha asked have you ever seen him and then he said no i never s- see him uh, so then buddha asked if you see him were you able to recognize him and again he said no i i don't know about his uh, marks so i don't know how to recognize him so then buddha asked a question is it all right if you if i preach you some uh, dhamma and then venerable pukkusati agreed and uh, allowed buddha to preach and he is addressing buddha as a friend because he didn't know that this is the buddha and buddha also didn't want to expose or reveal that he is the teacher he is the master on behalf of whom that venerable pukkusati gone forth but rather buddha also was very in a way humble and didn't want to do any sort of advertising and he immediately get into the dhamma and he started preaching so this sutta is coming like that so now buddha is preaching dhatu vibhanga sutta and uh, now he is giving uh, this information so he is telling this so called person is nothing but six elements so this is one explanation as i said before so we typically think i am a man i am a woman i am a mother i am a father i am a daughter i am a son so likewise we have so many different different uh, designations no different uh, identifications but uh, buddha is giving a entirely different explanation here and he is telling this so called person is nothing but six elements and then he is telling this so called person makes six bases of contact that's another explanation and then he is talking about this person is a kind of uh, uh, exploration of mind now whenever we see something accordingly we the mind explores the the pleasurable parts pleasurable components information available in that object similarly sometimes mind explores the sorrowful content in the uh, sight similarly the mind may examine uh, neutral information available in the uh, sight so likewise so in terms of the uh, behavior of the mind so buddha says it is 18 types of 18 kinds of mental exploration so this is what a person is called and then he is giving another explanation telling uh, now he is coming to a, actually a different stage and now he is telling this so called person has to have some sort of a foundation and those are four foundations and therefore the person then very much like uh, interpreted as four foundations establishing four foundations interestingly this is not the satipatthana for satipatthana for four foundations related to the mindfulness but this is a entirely different foundations and we will discuss them one by one and then is we more deeper explanations that is number 5 and number 
so when someone is well established in uh, these foundations so then he is at peace so he can become really peaceful so that is the attainment of arahantship so that is another explanation uh, so we can say that he is a noble person now enlightened person now and what is the explanation for an enlightened person so that is what given here and another thing is that when re- when related to the practice he is telling one should not neglect wisdom and should preserve truth and should cultivate relinquishment and should train for peace so this kind of an explanation is there there are basically six explanations are given and as a summary and now buddha is explaining one by one so we were discussing couple of them during last couple of weeks uh say for example this person consists of six elements most of you have heard about these elements earth element water element fire element air element space element and consciousness element so the whole experience the human experience all living experience can be uh, explained according to this model so there are physical components physical physical attributes as well as the uh, mental attribute this is one explanation we discussed this already and then the so called person is nothing but six bases of contact because you know uh, i get in contact with the forms sights then ear in contact with sounds nose in contact with various smells fragrances then uh, tongue in contact with various tastes body in contact with various tactile sensations and of course the mind in contact with various mental objects so as a result this contact is one important uh, point here so accordingly so one can say this is uh, the so called person so called being is nothing but six bases of contact and then is giving another explanation this person consists of 18 kinds of mental exploration when one uh, look at something using eyes so how are we managing our eye how are we using our eye so whenever we come across any kind of interesting information something beautiful something important so immediately assume that it is generating some amount of joy happiness so as a result so we explore more and more information which is more productive to that happiness to that pleasure similarly when there is any kind of uh, say sorrowful information uh, grief which is producing grief still we explore more and more so this is what uh, even unknowingly happens so when certain amount of grief is generated still we are not going out of it rather we are even mem- memorizing it again and again recollecting it or else we can we are exploring more and more information currently available in it though it is increasing our grief we are continuing it similarly if one is interested of the uh, information detail available in the site which is producing equanimity that also is explored examined investigated so therefore we can understand with respect to the i so these three kinds of explorations are there when it is producing happiness we still explore when it is producing grief we still going to explore we are using the mind to uh, grab information receive information examine and get more refined information and again when there are neutral information when again neutral uh, feelings are generated still we are trying to get more and more detail precise information observation so these things are going on so similarly we can apply the same kind of a pattern to the sounds which we hear from our ears so whenever a sound is present so we if it is producing some happiness so we are exploring it we are listening it attentively listening it and then uh, if it is generating some sort of an unhappiness anger irritation so we are interested about it we want to listen it carefully what are the facts there are they really 
uh, factual? Are they real true? So likewise, we are turning our ear towards that sound and we are trying to explore more and more detail. Similarly, if there is any another sound which we found interesting, important, so in, at that point we are turning our ear and trying to get more information. So likewise, we can apply that same kind of a scenario to this ear as well. Similarly to the nose, similarly to the tongue, similarly to the body and to the mind. So whenever mind encounters any kind of a mind object, so if it is generating some joy, so we are expanding it, exploring it, we are adding to it. So likewise we started the mental formations. On the other hand, if it is uh, generating little amount of sorrow, grief, we don't stop it. We may continue to think about it and we add to it. We take various other past memories, we project it to the future. So likewise we start fabrication, so the mind starts to explore. And again, if we found something uh, equanimous, and still, if you if you don't stop, we may start to think again and again, thinking about the same subject. So mind is now in the active mode. So likewise, related to these six senses, one can uh, understand. So, eighteen types of explorations are there. Even though the sense data is coming through these uh, eye, ear, nose, tongue, body and the mental objects are coming towards the mind. So these are in a way some passive objects, passive sensors we can say. But the mind is getting activated once this passive information is available. So actually this is well uh, explained in science as well. So whenever uh, the rays, the light rays are hitting the retina so it is making some sort of an inverted image and that being uh, decoded translated by the brain so likewise so all the perceptions recognition and all these things are happening in the brain so more and more information being extracted and more attention being paid so likewise this whole sense impingement sort of uh, stimulates mental participation mental stimulation, mental exploration. So therefore we can understand, so the whole experience one, ca one can define based on this sense stimulation. And uh, sense stimulation leading towards sort of mental exploration. So this is the scenario that Buddha is explaining and he is telling, so therefore this so-called person, so-called being is nothing but 18 types of mental exploration. So this is another explanation. And then we touch the other part last time. So Buddha is now telling this person has four foundations, four results we can say. The foundation of wisdom, foundation of truth, foundation of relinquishment and foundation of peace. So these are the four types of foundations that Buddha is explaining in this sutta. And in a way, these are fairly deep, we can say. So, therefore, we are taking some time to explain these things uh, one by one. And now we started the foundation of wisdom. With respect to the wisdom, Buddha says one should not neglect wisdom. In that sense, what we need to understand is that we have to uh, spend some energy to understand what is this wisdom, to acquire this wisdom. So this wisdom does not seem coming immediately or coming automatically as we getting older, but rather we have to practically do something in order to improve this wisdom. So this is where we have to practically get into the meditation especially to improve this so-called wisdom. So this wisdom again we need to understand is not the typical knowledge that we emphasize today. Say for example, today a lot of knowledge being emphasized. Say knowledge related to the information technology, maybe knowledge related to the worlds, knowledge related to the economics, physics, science and so many subjects are there. So that's also sometimes we misinterpret as wisdom, but it is typically called as knowledge. So you are accumulating a lot of knowledge 
and this is not what is meant here. So what is meant here is entirely a different aspect where sort of meditative knowledge, meditative wisdom has to be developed. So you can read so many books, you can listen to so many Dhamma sermons and accordingly you can generate a fair amount of wisdom and that is not enough. So you have to further involve in meditation in order to further improve your wisdom skills and this skill actually does not very much involved in thinking. So typically thinking related wisdom is also there. We sometimes call it as chintame panya, where by wise reflection, by wise contemplation, kind of analysis, rationalization, one can have some understanding. So that is again limited because not yet the experience is uh, uh, very evident to us. It is not our own personal experience. It's still someone's experience we are trying to analyze in the in a uh, superficial manner. So therefore we can't get that kind of a deeper experiential knowledge here. So what is important therefore is this experiential knowledge, experiential wisdom. So while going through say for example uh, a meditation, so because of our daily practice, what is the improvement in our wisdom it's a kind of a deeper understanding it may happen slowly and even it's difficult to measure but still if one continues one practice for a considerable period of time then he will understand there are significant changes in one's behavior accordingly one can understand so this meditation has a effect or impact on me on my behavior on my understanding so this sort of impact is there so, therefore, Buddha says, don't neglect this. Don't late to develop this wisdom because it may take some time. You need to develop certain skills in order to get this wisdom. It is not that you can simply read a book and take, but rather you have to prepare the mind, you have to uh, sort of uh, cultivate certain skills in the mind, then only you, you are capable of having this wisdom. So, therefore, this foundation of wisdom consisting of somewhat deep facts about the Buddha's teaching. And uh, so, we are now explaining that. So, we are in that group. Foundation of wisdom. So, foundation of wisdom should not be neglected. So, this is what Buddha uh, tells related to the wisdom component. And now, he is explaining... So what are the factors or what are the various aspects of this wisdom? So one aspect is that looking at the so-called person as six elements. So this is one explanation. So then one has to practically involve in meditation in order to get this wisdom, in order to arouse this wisdom, accumulate this wisdom. So this is the point. So you can understand, so this involved fair amount of book knowledge, some understanding about the Buddha's teaching and recognizing certain amount of uh, meditation techniques, systems, methods and applying it practically. So say for example, uh, if we consider the earth element, so typical, typically we think this body belongs to me, this body is one unit. This body is mine and this is beautiful, it is tall, it is short, it is fat, it is lean. So likewise we identify with the body. But now Buddha is telling this body is not just a single unit but it consists of so many components. Say for example, head, hair, body, hair, nails, teeth, skin. So all these are list explaining various components included in the body or oh, these are the components consisting in the body so when one is looking at in that perspective so basically his we want compactness sometimes we call as ganasanya we typically think everywhere there are solids there are sort of uh, one unit operating as one thing so this compactness this view of compactness has to be broken 
and then one gets a uh, kind of a different perspective it is not a single thing or single unit or single person but rather it's a accumulation of so many minute components then this the delusion coming through the compactness breaks so this is the important part so the earth element therefore buddha says you can look at the body be aware that there are so many components are there it's a combination it's an accumulation of so many components and it is not a single person single body so when one look at in that angle so his view of compactness going to change going to uh, vanish because he is understanding now it has so many other components all together we call a person say for example if you consider a car and we say okay this is a car but if we dismantle this car so we will understand okay there is engine there are bonnet doors uh, tires uh, various other uh, different different components and all together once they are properly fixed in a certain manner certain pattern we then give the name a car but actually there is no car actually what is is a kind of a accumulation assembly of so many components so now we are trying to get that perspective that understanding which is more productive of wisdom than t- understanding conventionally this is so and so this is a man this is a woman this is a child so likewise that conventional understanding conventional reality is actually good for communication but still it does not take you deeper so this these deep understandings actually help us to break the ignorance and this is the information that buddha is giving here in this uh, wisdom aspect of this sutta now on the other hand say he is talking about a uh, water element so water element also has uh, 12 components which relate with related to the body and whatever is fluid whatever is water whatever is watery can be considered as water element say bile flame pus blood sweat so tears and all these things have majority water majority watery and therefore we can say okay this is the uh, water element and again suppose if we consider a uh, fire element so we know i mean we all have body temperature so this fire element or heat which is causing this uh, body temperature so this again a uh, act or sort of a uh, operation of a yeah, fire element similarly when one is sort of uh, feeling kind of a burning sensation so that is also due to fire element again we understand okay we are subject to aging and that is also fire element i mean we born as a child and become uh, say born as an infant then become a child then become a youth then become older so likewise we have a kind of an ongoing aging process in the body and therefore this whole aging process actually is a task of fire element fire element is responsible for aging anything so this aging deterioration maturing all are the aspects of fire element whenever that is present we can understand okay the fire element is present and then we can understand the air element so there are various ongoing winds the ongoing winds so there are winds in the belly and the bowels and so likewise and in breath and out breath so all these phenomena has air element as its uh, prominent component majority so this is the air element so when we understand in that respect so this whole body consists of four elements so these four elements can be taken into practice say for example if uh, one wants to recognize uh, earth element so one aspect is that what i have explained so we can recognize okay we have different different components in the body hair kidney heart liver so likewise we can name them we can recognize them but on the other hand when we are going deeper so this kind of understanding is not enough 
we may have to further refine our practice and we have to recognize the presence of each and every element experientially. Well, this is also not that difficult. So this is sometimes called a four element meditation or dhatu manasikara. So we are training the mind to recognize various elements. Say for example you are doing walking meditation and you are in the walking path and you know your left foot is touching the ground. Typically the ground is hard. So you can recognize this hardness. So the physical ground is now has hardness. So this hardness is being recognized by the mind. So mind has the capacity to recognize hardness. Similarly, if you are walking on a tile, so you understand it is also hard, but again it has some smoothness. And again it may be called. So likewise there are various characteristics. So these characteristics are the more fundamental characteristics, more primordial characteristics, primary characteristics of our experience. Actually, on ba based on this, we prepare or we create so much other uh, information, so much other conventions. And ultimately, we forget this more fundamental level experience. So that is what typically happens. So we forget the fundamental experience, the basic experience, but we are getting lost in the derived information or derived experience. On top of this fundamental basic level experience, we are fabricating, we are generating various stuff. And But we are going to live in that generated or fabricated stuff, in that fabricated phenomena. It is not real. But our thinking pattern is mostly involved in this fabricated information, papancha. But on the other hand, if one is uh, wise, so now one can try to understand the presence of different, different elements. Say for example, when you are in walking meditation, when your foot is touching the ground, now you are recognizing hardness, you are recognizing stiffness, you are recognizing cold, you are recognizing heat, you are recognizing movement. So various characteristics are there, so they are quite basic, they are quite primary and we need to recognize them. So that is where beautifully Matarashi Nyanarama Mahatero is mentioning, the yogi, the practitioner should understand the language of elements. So these elements are talking in a different language, it is not English, it is not Sinhala, but rather they are expressing their presence using their characteristics. So if one know these characteristics, so using those characteristics we can recognize, we can understand the presence of various elements. So when there is hardness available, so then we can understand, okay, this earth element is present. When roughness is available, when, if, when we can recognize roughness, we can determine, we can decide, okay, earth element is present. When weight or heaviness is available, again we can decide, we can recognize the earth element is present. When we experience softness, smoothness, lightness, also indicate the presence of earth element. So you can see, experientially we can recognize the presence of earth element. It is not merely a book knowledge, but rather experientially. You can experience earth element the presence of earth element. Say you do uh, sitting meditation. At that time assume that you are able to feel touching sensation or you are able to feel the weight of your hand or maybe certain places are being touched thoroughly. Assume that your uh, foot, sole being uh, touched by the floor so that is producing some kind of a feeling, some hardness feeling is there. So likewise, even while sitting, you can recognize hardness, you can recognize softness, you can recognize roughness, smoothness. All these things you can even recognize while sitting. While walking, you can recognize them. While standing, you can recognize them. While lying down, you can recognize them. So while being in any kind of a uh, posture, you can recognize so therefore, in order to recognize various uh, element characteristics, there is no any sort of a uh, posture 
but while being in any posture you can recognize these characteristics so similarly you can recognize the presence of earth uh, uh, water element so wherever you feel flowing if you are able to pay your attention to sweating so the sweating indicates the presence of water element when while urinating is happening so if you are keeping your attention then you can recognize the presence of water element so likewise if one is uh, capable one can recognize the presence of water element typically we say in vipassana recognition of water element is difficult so therefore yogis are not immediately encouraged to recognize water element but if one is well developed and one has well refined uh, mindfulness clear comprehension so one can try to recognize what element again if we consider fire element say you can recognize the presence of fire element say uh, you are experiencing in breath and out breath comparatively maybe in breath is more cooler than the out breath out breath is little warmer so this is the indication that the fire element is present in the breath so when breath is touching our nostril we can understand it is cool when it is going out when the exhale happens it is warm so that indicates kind of a temperature difference and that is a characteristic of this fire element so whenever you feel any sort of cold any sort of uh, heat so you can recognize the fire element while you are walking you can recognize that is it the coir mat or the sand path is it warm or is it cold so if you are able to recognize this cold or heat then you can understand okay the fire element is present so whenever you are able to suppose your two hands are touching each other and if you can recognize the uh, warmth of one hand to the other hand so that is the presence of fire element if there is any legs are being touched not only the weight but even the temperature can be recognized temperature can be understand so this is the presence of the fire element and then we can understand the air element so this is the most easiest part in a way say when your abdomen is moving so that is indication that air element is present because the movement is characteristic of the fire uh, air element kind of pushing uh, movement are uh, all the characteristic of the air element so you can understand now if you apply these characteristics if you are trying to recognize these characteristics in your meditation so we are in the hatu manasikara so we are in element meditation so we can understand various presence the the presence of various elements and what is the advantage so that is what more important in our practice so typically we give some importance to the internal elements so we value the internal earth element internal water element internal say air element internal fire element but on the other hand when we put it to the outside so outside also consisting of earth element outside also consists of fire element air element water element say if you consider a river whatever a reservoir so it has water element if you consider a say table a car so all the majority the earth element if you consider a wind mostly it is air element so likewise so there are i mean if you consider a fire so that is the fire element so likewise so you can understand so these elements not only in the inside but also available in outside so more and more you understand that inside earth element and the outside earth elements are merely earth element so that actually is an insight so typically as i said we give some prominence some importance to internal elements but once you understand these are merely elements and they have these these characteristics and those characteristics are not unique to the internal elements but also it is applicable to the external elements 
and then therefore one can understand okay the internal earth elements and the external earth elements are simply merely earth element internal water element and the external water element are merely the water element internal fire element and the external fire element are merely the fire element internal air element and the external air element are merely the air element so we we do this boundary me and outside i and outside so this boundary we lose it become uh, blurred so there is no very defined boundary now now everything appear sort of blurred internal external that difference has disappeared faded away so this is quite imp- important because we do grasping we do holding because we attribute a value to something when something is expensive when something something is important when something is beautiful when something is uh, sort of expensive so likewise we have different uh, parameters to give some value so if it is valuable then we grasp it we hold it we try to possess it so those points are there but when one recognize internally what is available are elements externally what is available are elements and they are the elements there is no any difference internal and external boundary going to be blurred so that boundary is no more now your perspective is entirely different so now you will feel okay everywhere elements whole physical world is nothing but elements so i'll add the space element also here so this space element is in- introduced here so there are kind of cavities available in the body say inside the ears the holes are there inside nostrils you have there's a cavity and uh, say uh, at our stomach that's again a cavity in our say colons and this uh, intestines so there are cavities and so likewise there are cavities hollow areas are available there are the space element is predominant but actually space element is not taken for vipassana uh, maybe due to its subtle appearance but on the other hand we can easily recognize the presence of earth element we can easily recognize the presence of air element we can easily recognize the presence of fire element so if we can recognize these various characteristics then they indicates or they tell that that respect to element is present there more and more we look at like that more and we more and more we practice like that so we will understand okay it is nothing but elements internal are elements external are also elements so you loses the self view or at least dilutes the self view because now you are not introducing a self to any of these internal elements because they are similar to the external elements and all these elements are so transient so once you are having that kind of a deeper understanding then the result is that loosened grasping or loosened self view thinking that is a person here kind of personality view sakai ditti has a large impact on this compactness view so when we take one unit when we consider every experience as one thing i am experiencing i am suffering i am happy so we are at that way we are sort of attributing a single person to this whole experience but when this whole experience is defined with respect to various elements so there is no sort of a uh, one unit but it's a kind of a combination accumulation of so much of experiences so therefore our the perspective become different the beginning we had a different perspective and once we know they are merely elements and they are so transient so impermanent and i have no control at all over them so then this grasping going to be reduced so therefore this dhatu manasikara the element meditation is more conducive for wisdom say for example if you do metta meditation buddha anusthati so it also has wisdom component but not this much so therefore dhatu manasikara is fairly a very good meditation technique to improve our wisdom 
to change our perspective related to our experience. So this is a kind of a turning point. And uh, I like to keep the uh, this uh, other element, that is consciousness element, to the next day, because uh, that is uh, quite important and it it is worthy of analyzing it uh, more deeper. So I like to wind up today with this information. And if there is any uh, sort of a question related to this explanation, or if you have any other question, so. F- Feel free to use this chance and uh, you are now uh, allowed to ask any of your questions. For any new participants to this group, welcome. If you do have questions, feel free to raise your hand and under the participants list. Or uh, we can also unmute you and you may ask the questions directly yourself. So one of the questions, Bhante, that I received, uh, if we find difficult to feel the breath around the nose, can we try to notice the movement of the chest to calm myself? Yeah, you can use. Actually, it is not no harmful. So different uh, techniques are possible. Say if you want to calm down yourself, you, know, you can use the physical aspect of the body. Because every time when the mind is agitated, so it has an impact on the bodily movements. Uh, it has an impact on your various bodily processes. Say, for example, if you, are, uh, if you become afraid of something, then the heartbeat increases. Those are very obvious uh, changes. So if you get angry, so the mind, again, the heartbeat may increase. Again, some sort of a holding happens in the mind. So likewise, all these different uh, mental changes has a physical connection. So you can divert your attention to these physical uh, changes. And as a result, when you are analyzing, or rather not the analyzing, but when you are ex- observing these physical changes, the, pro- the outcome is your mind calms down. Because you are not promoting or you are not fertilizing this mental process. Rather, the energy being diverted to the physical process and you are observing the physical process or the physical result, physical outcome. You are now not pumping enough resources to the mental process to sustain. So as a result, mental process disappears. Mental process fades away. So that's a good technique we are using. So when you are not capable of immediately tackling or handling the mental activities, In order to handle that, you need to have a fair amount of mindfulness so that you can be face to face with the say defilements. But if you are not yet confident about it, you can of course divert your attention to the physical component, physical changes. As a result, the physical changes going to be disappeared and again the mental process also going to be calmed down. Thank you, Bhante. Um, and the next question, are the space element and consciousness element not taken for Vipassana practice because these are far less tangible than the other four? So we are expected to simply observe the four. Is that correct? Uh, not really. Basically, the uh, among six elements, the four elements are... Uh, more physical so in Dhatu Manasikara we are using four elements space element can be used for reflection kind of a logical rational analysis when one is doing that is also important but physical experience we are using four elements but on the other hand if we consider the consciousness element so the one attribute or one task of consciousness element is to know various feelings so whenever you are capable of recognizing various feelings, that indicates the presence of the consciousness. So that's why I, I kept it for the next week, because uh, there Buddha is explaining consciousness element based on its task. So here he is mentioning the task of consciousness is to know various feeling tones. Whether is it pleasurable feeling? Is it a painful feeling? Is it a 
equanimous feeling. So this kind of a distinction, this kind of a separate knowing is possible because of the activity of the consciousness. The consciousness have that vijanati, so this uh, recognition, separately identifying, separately recognizing. So that is a kind of a skill this uh, consciousness has. So whenever you therefore understand there is a pleasurable feeling, there is a painful feeling, there is a neutral feeling, there is happiness, there is sorrow. So when you understand that attribute, so this is a function of the consciousness. So like I have mentioned now say when you feel hardness, when you feel softness, when you feel heaviness. So those are the characteristics which indicate the presence of earth element. Similarly, when you can recognize, okay, this is a pleasure, pleasurable feeling, this is a sort of, this is a painful feeling, this is a neutral feeling. So, it's a, this is a presence of the, it indicates the presence of the consciousness. It is, it is because of the, uh, the recognition, cognition happened through the consciousness element that we are capable of distinctly recognize these different feeling tones. So therefore, according to that approach, Buddha is explaining the consciousness element. So I will go into. I am going to explain that in next week. Actually, that is on next Wednesday, because it's worthy of uh, understanding consciousness element separately, and it is having some interesting information. So therefore, that is being used for our vipassana practice. It is not that we are not using consciousness element. Actually, we do use consciousness element. Thank you, Bhante. Um, the next question, uh, dear Bhante, based on personal meditation experiences, um, there seems to be a difference between the definition of the space element here in the Dhamma talk, uh, space element here, uh, specifically internal elements are defined as holes and crevices within the body uh, but based on personal meditation experience it seems that um, even within the holes and crevices such as in the nostril there are still other uh, elements present but rather between the elements there seems to be a space did i misunderstand the space element no, actually, uh, all the elements are present. Say, for example, if you consider the physical component, physical side, uh, all these five elements are present, we can see. Say, for example, even in water, not only water element is present. Even the earth element, some amount of earth element is present. So that's why we can use uh, them to uh, turn turbines. Because when the water being hit to the turbine blades, so that is, then the turbine starts to rotate. So that indicates the presence of the uh, earth element available in the water. And assume that you have a pressure gun. So you, if, if, if it is being uh, uh, sort of uh, aimed to you, so it, it, can, it can even hit. So and even the water being used to cut even uh, what you call uh, the, the metals. So that means that water element has the earth element. What I mean is not, not that water element has the earth element, but when we consider the typical presence of water, uh, say in a river, it is not only water element el present, in the river there is earth element also present. And again, kind of a movement, the air element is present, flowing, the water element is present. And water, of course, has a temperature. You can boil it, you can heat it. So that indicates the presence of the heat element. So likewise, and again, in between the water molecules, there are spaces also available. So likewise, that's why, I mean, when you are sort of uh, making it, making ice, the, the volume changes are going to happen. So likewise, the, the, all the uh, five elements are present when we are considering various components or various physical aspects, it is not that uh, river simply has water element, nothing else. It is not that air simply has air element, nothing else. But 
even the air even say for example inhale and exhale as these five elements so that's why when when you are inhaling if you feel cold so that indicates the fire element not the air element but when you feel the movement of the air so that indicates the air element and when the air touches the nostril so you have some sensation so that indicates the earth element so likewise even in the inhale and exhale these uh, elements are present thank you bhaji uh, that is all of the questions that i received are there any other questions online uh, it looks like there's maybe one more yeah we use noticing elements to enable us not to get attached or hate to our focuses yeah that's right i mean that's what i mean when we are recognizing more and more elements and the presence of various elements that internal ex- external boundary going to be uh, blurred it's going to disappear now when you understand this body consists of four elements another body consists of four elements so you are losing the sort of distinction you are now losing the kind of an importance that you are attributing towards the body thinking this body is important or another body is important another body is beautiful this body is beautiful but when you understand okay there is not not just one single body here but rather it's a accumulation of so much of elements so that that's a kind of an insight that loosens our grip that loosens our grasping our clinging so that is quite useful that is why that is what it's important that's what the buddha is giving a kind of a simile in this uh, satipatthana you are when you are considering elements so you are losing the compactness and again you are losing the uh, what you call this uh, the 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 notion of a person instead of the notion of person the notion of individual we are changing the attitudes that change in the perspective this is a kind of an accumulation of elements not a single person but an accumulation of elements so internally an accumulation of elements externally an accumulation of elements and all these elements doesn't behave according to my wish they are not under my control and they are constantly subject to various change so these all understandings this these all insights are quite helpful to reduce our attachment to reduce our grip to reduce our grasping so that is what the outcome of this uh, the hatu manasikara element meditation so more one one is involved in this uh, the hatu manasikara so one starts to let go of any kind of a holding suppose you are holding uh, your car you like your car so you are you are you are really sort of attached to the car but if you can recognize okay this car is nothing but four elements another car is also just four elements so what's the difference there why are you attributing so much of importance so much of value to this car that is maybe just because of our ignorance just we are having some ayonuso manasikara just in the surface level not penetrating enough not uh, going deeper and that is because of that we have the uh, misunderstanding or wrong understanding thinking that this car is important this car is valuable uh, than another car or another whatever it is so that sort of understanding is quite important in order to loosen our attachment and uh, therefore the element meditation is quite useful in meditation and uh, uh being encouraged to practice i mean we, that's where the whole purpose of this session to give you enough confidence that why we are doing this this is it has a lot of uh uh ground information available here that's why we are doing it even though we started the, with very simple steps like left right left right rising falling so the, all these are very simple techniques we are trying to Uh, accommodate during our initial stages but later when our mind become more concentrated when it is more mindful then this deeper information 
and the deeper understanding insights are possible because mind now is fairly uh, wise enough to uh, get these insights and as a result one become quite wise so the, with less uh, passion or less uh, grasping less attachment and then the mind is free mind is not uh, sort of burdened but mind is ready to let go mind is ready to give up now the mind has some space mind has the clarity mind is not holding mind is not congested mind has its own wisdom mind has its own freedom because nothing to hold so we are we, when when we think or when we assume that something is important something is beautiful something is worthy then only we are holding then only we are grasping but when we clearly understand there is nothing to grasp there is nothing important it is a combination it's an accumulation of so much of elements internal elements and external elements are both merely elements and that actually breaks off this uh, it's a kind of breaking this compactness view and this breaking of this uh, the value that we have unnecessarily given so that actually reduce the grasping reduce the attachment and that is the freedom of mind so that produces fair amount of freedom of mind yes thank you banji uh, may we take another question mm, yeah maybe one minute try to <laughs> try to answer that uh, shortly okay, in a short I form yeah a short yeah question. can we observe the feelings and elements together uh actually uh rather than observing them together what i like to say is they are very close it's a it's a kind of a change of perspective say for example when you are walking assume that your your foot is touching the ground and it is producing some kind of a feeling mostly it is a neutral feeling so that is one one way of looking at it on the other hand you can recognize okay this uh, there is hardness there is softness uh there is movement so you can look at it in that perspective as well in, in that view as well so therefore the rupa khand the form and the vedana khand the feelings are very closely related it is the it is the kind of a perspective in our mind uh, which way or which angle we are looking at them are we looking at them in the element angle or are we looking at in the feeling tone angle so they are well interrelated so therefore i mean rather than trying to look at both at the same time at the same moment you can give prominence to one at a time say when you are looking at uh, your experience in the in in terms of the elements you can look at it you are, you can try to recognize the presence of various elements because it is the recognition i mean distinct recognition of various elements is also necessary i mean that is improving our clear comprehension sampajanya and after recognition of these distinct information distinct characteristics then only it is leading to the common characteristics understanding how they are behaving so more and more we observe the behavior of these elements they are productive of more wisdom one will understand the impermanent nature the transient nature one will understand the unsatisfactoriness and one will understand the non self characteristic so likewise so when you are in the element meditation it is important to keep the element side open and uh, on the other hand when you are in the vedana anupassana it is important to look at them in the feeling tone the feeling aspect uh, they are very close by the way so so therefore i mean one time you can look at elements element uh, angle and after practicing in that manner if you like you can switch to uh with feeling tone that is the vedana anupassana angle so not both at the same time but time to time you can switch no harm in switching but not both at the same moment okay, but thank you uh, that will be all questions for today yeah So thank you very much for the participation actually I like to wind up uh, quickly today uh because I have to attend another uh, activity 
So I am actually uh, broadcasting this through uh, Kalalgoda in Colombo. Uh, and uh, hope to meet you all on uh, next Wednesday as usual uh, at 7 a.m. Sri Lanka time as uh, our typical English uh, Sutta teaching. Thank you very much for participation.